course. How are you doing today? Go ahead. Yeah. You're, so you're in Oklahoma City, huh? Yes. Uh, Aren't you originally from L.A., I think I saw? How did you end up in Oklahoma City? In California, so like San Jose. Okay. And I came out uh, for college. I wrestled very briefly at, in college and didn't really like the whole college thing, so I switched it up and ended up staying here. Cool, cool. And did I see you were at the American Top Team in Oklahoma City? Yes. Okay, cool. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, so how do you like Oklahoma compared to California? Yeah, it's different. Everyone thinks it's like like a like a little town in the middle of nowhere. It's like a city. It's not it's not bad yeah, I like it. Yeah. I'm kind of like a like a slower person, you know, I don't really like to be in like a busy, busy city, so it works out. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, no, that's that's definitely Oklahoma City's actually really nice. People don't really realize that, but it is I, my stepsister used to live there and I love going to visit. I was like, this place is really nice. Yeah, I like it a lot. Um, what uh so you were fighting in Invicta before, right? Right. What's been the biggest change going to the UFC that you've noticed or that you've had to kind of overcome? Or I guess what are the biggest differences between Invicta, UFC, and even Bellator? Because I saw you saw that you had five or six fights there, too. Right. Um, you know, for me, there's not a huge difference. I feel like everywhere I go, I, I always end up getting hard fights. So, um it just different promotion, different style. Bellator was was a lot different with their division. Uh, Shannon and Invicta they really match for like quality opponents, not so much like building people. Not saying you know, okay. I'm saying Bellator does that all the time, but like there definitely are some people that some shows build, you know, like to to give yeah. different fights to. And Shannon just doesn't do that. She just wants to match like quality fights all the time. So that's why you'll see like good people versus good people all the time. Um, and I really, really liked that. Um, and the UFC, obviously, there is no, you know, matching for anything other than quality. And, and there is, I mean, the level there is just everyone's good. So you can't really escape that. I was going to say, like, when you talk about female prospects, I mean, all of the best ones seem to either come from Invicta or at least spend some time in Invicta these days. Yeah, I think that's, you know, directly attributes to Shannon matchmaking and, and, like, making sure all these girls are ready. So, like, they're fighting hard fights, hard fights, hard fights, and they go to the UFC and they're not kind of in, like, a, a shock um, as opposed to, you know, you're fighting in small shows around the country and you're, you're fighting not such quality opponents. You know, sometimes they're just, you know, people won't agree to fight and et cetera, et cetera. But sometimes people, you know, just want to pat a record and, and hop on over there and they're kind of shocked when they get there. Um, so I feel like I learned a lot of hard lessons before, which I'm thankful for. And, and instead of having it, I know I'm going to learn a lot of lessons in the UFC, but, um, you know, a lot of my hard lessons were learned outside the UFC. And, and that's kind of what gives me the confidence there. That's right. How, how, so how long of an amateur career did you have before you made that jump? I was four and two, so I had six fights amateur. Okay. Yeah, I, like, it seems like it's there's a big difference between every fighter that we talk to. You know, some people, they are ready after one, and then there's been fighters that tell us they went too early, they felt like, you know, they couldn't adjust to the losses whenever they first got, you know, in the professional world. Um, so it's, it's really cool to see, how, you know, how, how the difference is. Yeah, I feel like you see a lot of the younger fighters have, I mean, unless they're really young, you see them have more amateur fights under their belt, where it's guys back in the day, I mean, some of those guys, their first few fights, they were in the UFC on their like third, fourth fight, just because there weren't all the leagues and organizations around, and there wasn't that pro level before. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of options nowadays, which is great, but, you know, like I said, I do think that, you know, you need to be getting the hard fights. Otherwise, I mean, what's the point? Why are you, why are you not going to test yourself outside? And then what do you think you're going to do when there are no easy fights in the UFC? Like, or even Bellator. Bellator has a great Absolutely. division. Um, you know, if you're not challenging yourself before you get to the highest level, I think it's a mistake. I mean, I know the record will look pretty, but you're not going to look good when you're, you know, getting in, you're in there and you're shocked and somebody's beating you up. Yeah, the numbers can only take you right. so far. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that 100%. So what got you into MMA? 
you talked about how you wrestled in college a little bit. Is that what you started with, or what what martial art was your introduction into the world? Um, so I, I always like to talk about this because I think it's just totally, you know, people don't, not everyone knows about it. My grandparents actually kind yeah. of, they are, my, my grandma especially, she's like an MMA fanatic she loves it and so I just remember being a kid watching the fights with them at their house and I think they really wanted me to be able to defend myself and so they kind of convinced my parents to sign me up for taekwondo so you know I was a kid and taekwondo is like obviously I don't want to say that's my base but that's what got me into the martial arts world and I just fell in love with the the routine the dedication the discipline um it just matches well with my personality. I just really like that kind of structured lifestyle. So from there, as a kid, you know, uh, transitioned into wrestling in high school a little bit. Moved to Oklahoma City to wrestle in college. Didn't like, you know, I wasn't doing well. Didn't like the whole, I never really adjusted to the college and the college athletics. So um, I, I did a little bit and I left and ended up finding the gym here in Oklahoma. And, and that was a wrap. The coach was extremely routine. You know, I had been to a couple gyms before and I just didn't like how it was kind of like random and, and unstructured. And so when I found him and he was super structured, very like on your butt about making sure you're doing everything, that was it. Um, I've been with him ever since and, yeah. and he's been in my corner for every single fight since then. Right. So you just you kind of just clicks, right? You just like, it's like yes. a home, you know, like I, I, it's described the same way, you know, it's like everybody, I don't think anybody finds their, their gym, you know, when they first start out. It takes, it takes a lot of time, especially when you make that jump to the level where you're at. I think it's, it's very important to have, you, you got to figure out, you got to be happy. You got to figure out so. like the coaching style and, and the team style that you like. That's, that's where I, I think the, like the argument with big gym versus small gym comes in, you know, everyone's like, Oh, you've got to be at this big yeah. gym where all these UFC fighters are all the time. So you're getting all this great work. And, and yeah, I do agree. Like, you need to be training with, you know, high level people, but you don't have to be at a big gym to do that. So, um, I'm really happy with my gym. Um, it's an American top team, but it's a branch. So it's, it's not a coconut Creek. It's a very small, uh, team in Oklahoma and, and I get everything I need and I've got outside, you know, girls that I like to train with. Um, so I feel really happy with my gym set up. And I think that, like you said, you need to have the skill there to obviously improve and get better because you're not going to get better if you're not challenging yourself. But at the same time, I think having an, a strong culture around there is very important as well. And that's where, like you said, it doesn't matter if it's a big gym or a small gym. If you can create a strong culture and, like, a family-like thing, then that's going to go a long right. way. Right. And, well. you know, there's some fighters that, like, want to be involved with the coaching, and there's some fighters that want absolutely nothing. They just want to be told what to do. And I think that just has a big, you know, mm -hmm. part to play in, like, the team that you decide to be on. I like to be, I like to be very involved. Um, so, like, my coaches here, like, right. we discuss everything. I want to know exactly, like, why we're doing what we're doing and you know some coaches don't don't want that they want to just be able to tell like a, like an athlete what to do and just have them like listen and so it just fits everything fits uh, with me and my coaches and the team and and you know I think everyone just needs to you need to know what how you work and and find coaches that work that same way absolutely right so growing up you obviously watched the fight between your grandparents. Who who did you look up to? Who was your favorite fighter? Uh, my grandma loved Uriah Faber, the California kid. Obviously, we were in California, and that was kind of like okay. <laughs> that okay. was kind of like her favorite fighter. Uh, I loved him too for a long, long time. And and then you know I just really got into women's, and I just watched everybody, everything, everybody at the highest level. You know, Invicta, UFC, even Bellator when they were starting out. I, I just I watched all of that. Um, and that's what kind of got me into mm -hmm. it. Invicta especially because I had gone to a show when I was an amateur. I think it was in Vegas. And we we watched it live and I was like, oh, this is it. Like, this is where I want to be. This is what I want to do. Um, this yeah. is, you know, I just love that it's an all-women show. And it's like, Shannon picks, like, yeah. just great. She scouts, like, the best of the best girls. Um, and I just, that just kind of really, you know, inspired me and motivated me. And I'm really happy that I was able to, you know, be a part of Invicta for a part of my career. That that was um, really Absolutely. something I, I was happy about. I actually 
this like earlier this year when we first kind of started doing this, I didn't know that much about Invicta. And the more that I learned about it and the more that I started looking, I was like, wow, this is huge for women's MMA because the talent that comes out of Invicta is, you know, it, it really wasn't that long ago when, when Ronda Rousey was the first women's champion, you know, like that was 2013. Now, like, women are coming up fast in the MMA right. world. Like, it, it, you see it every week. It's like the, the athleticism is, is there. It's like the level of, of striking gets better. The gra- every every aspect of, of women's MMA is evolving yeah, so quickly. Yeah, it is. It is for sure. It's kind of like exploding. I think, you know, people start to see women like in all these shows now because all these shows are adding all these weight classes, which is fantastic. I think they need to, like Bellator needs a 115. Uh, Shannon does really good about, you know, matching all the, all the divisions, but Bellator... You know, I think they would do amazing with the 115 division. They've already got, you know, all these 125ers that are really, really good. And I mean, it's only like, I just, it's not enough. I think that they could, you know, just explode with the 115 division. And obviously, the UFC has got several now that they've slowly added over time. And it's, I'm just, it's, it's great. I think they need to be doing that, you know, more. Uh, there's so many girls, so many, so many athletes mm-hmm. all over the place that they could scoop up. Right. Uh, so I, I saw that you entered the rankings. Thank you. Congrats, by the way. Um, did you expect to get a ranking after your no, debut fight? No, that was kind of like a cherry on top. Um, right now, for me, I'm not really concerned about rankings. Not to say that I don't care about it or I don't want to be ranked. But just like right now, this is the beginning of my UFC career. Just um, I plan to be here for a long time. So I'm not trying to rush. I'm not trying to you know call out anyone that's ranked or or whatever. Yeah. So it just kind of was like a, like a cool thing that happened, you know, um, Jessica's opponent yeah. dropped out. Like you said, it's not even something you were right. even thinking about. So, right. Yeah. Her opponent dropped so out cool. and I just kind of slid right. in. And so, you know, I wasn't even planning on fighting someone that was ranked, but I'm not going to turn any opportunity down. And so, you know, I got the call for that fight and I was Listen. like, yep, I don't care if she's ranked or not. Yeah, now she's been around the UFC for for a while. She's, I mean, that was a big win for you. I'm glad you got it. I mean, it's just, it's huge. I mean, it shows what happens when you're always ready. You know, I, I think, it, I, I love Patty Biblet. I love the guy. I just don't know how he gains all the weight and then loses it like he does. I'm just yeah. like, this dude's nuts. But a lot of athletes are always ready. That's that is the main point. It's just like, I don't think he was ready a couple weeks after his fight. But, I mean, that's his choice. You know, I think that's right. how he decided yeah. to do it, so. And now I think I saw in an interview somewhere that you weren't even necessarily that pleased with your debut performance. I, I guess what what do you think that you wanted to do better in your head, or what what is it that you want to show in your next fight to the fans, to the organization? Yeah, ever? it's not that I was like unhappy with it. I'm really really happy that you know I just made the debut and got the win, and that's obviously the most important thing. Um, yeah, but I do want to show like more of my skill set and just like a faster pace. Um, I had fought five, five rounds for, you know, the last two fights before that. So I kind of was starting a little slower, you know, pacing myself for five, five potential rounds. Um, so I do want to, you know, right. up the pace. I have that pace and I just want to show it, but I am happy with the technical skills that I showed. You know, I said that before the fight that Really, I, I just want to be as technical as possible. I'm not really a brawler. I'll do that if necessary. But more importantly, I want to like showcase the art of it and just be as technical and sharp and precise as possible. And so I'm happy with that aspect. You know, I, I did feel really sharp. But I just want to pick up the pace, uh, mix in, you know, it depends each strategy. You know, each each fight has a different strategy. But, you know, I've, I've got takedowns and I've got grappling that I want to mix in as well. So that's kind of what I want to show, just more well-roundedness. Yeah. I can see that, but I, I, I like, well, what I can say is I like how, how, like you said, you were talking about being the technical, but also just the ability to stick to a game plan. I mean, you talked about how you wanted to do the leg kicks and you wanted to do this certain things fighting her, and I felt like you, you stuck with that game plan throughout the whole thing and stayed level-headed. And, I mean, the bottom line, you got the win, and that's what you were there to do, so. I think that was awesome. I thought it was good. I'm glad. I'm glad that that's what it looked like. And, you know, I just wanted to show that. And obviously it's my debut, so I've got plenty of time to build on it. But, uh, but yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. I think think it adds adds to, you know, like, I don't know how many times we've we've seen it, you know, somebody lose a fight and the first thing that they say is there was a game plan and I didn't stick to it. 
I mean, it happens. I, I, whenever you're in there, I'm sure it, it sometimes right. it happens. But I mean, if, it, it may be a little bit easier to swallow taking a loss if you know you followed your game plan and you know kind of gave right. it a shot. You yeah, I just had. you know when I fight, I just want to. If I give it everything, you know, if I'm not holding back or whatever, you know, I'm pretty happy with myself. If you try your best and, you know, win or lose, I mean, what else could you do? So, like, as long as there was nothing else that I could have done, that's kind of, you know, that, that's it for me. And so um, I'm just trying to be as free as possible in there, less stress, less pressure, and just go out and fight. Um, and that's what I feel like I've been doing more recently, and, and that, that makes me happy for my career, you know, to finally be able to just, you know, go out and fight. And, and sometimes you see, like, Fighters are super hesitant and, and whatever, and I've had that in my career where I've been like that, and so I'm just trying to, to let it loose, you know, show a little bit more each time. Right. What has helped you kind of loosen up fight to fight and to be able to get out there and show what you want and, I guess, like you were just talking about, to be able to... Yeah, I did go. a lot of rebuilding in Invicta. Shannon was really um, amazing to take me on. You know, I had lost a few, and then um, I yeah. needed to take some time, uh, regrouped my, me and my team added some new things to my routine and Shannon, you know, took a chance on, on me and I was able to do five fights with her. And I feel like I really reinvented and rebuilt and all that experience, uh, against good opponents, uh, is what I feel like, you know, building confidence one fight at a time and just getting back into it. And, and the more you use your skills in the fights, the more they work, it just, you just build and build and build. And so I feel like I've just built uh, and, and and more comfortable now and you know I know I've always had these skills and mm -hmm. you see it all the time with fighters it's just like it's hard to go out there and show everything and so um, so I'm just happy with yeah with how I'm feeling now and how I'm performing and just look to build on that yeah and now every especially well, in MMA every fighter wants to be well rounded but is there is there, a, do you lean towards striking or grappling? Do you have um, a I train everything uh, just to be prepared. I love everything. So I'm not like, oh, I need to be striking or I'm going to freak out if I hit the ground or whatever. But it just depends yeah. on the stylistic matchup, what, you know, whoever we're fighting. And then I'll just get in there and feel it out and see where I'm most comfortable. And then that's it. Just, you know, feel like I adjust really well. So I'll just want to get in there, um, feel it out and adjust to wherever mm -hmm. I need to be. And when you train, are you typically, like, when it becomes time for the fight camp, are you training, do you kind of base your camp around an opponent, or are you just training to be the best you? So we watch them, obviously, and, and have specific things that we're working on, but it's it's all about me. Yeah. You know, just be aware of them and, yeah. and just train and sharpen up all of my right. stuff. Right, yeah, because they're doing the same thing. You know, you, you never know what they're going to come out and try to do, so... I mean, that makes sense. I mean, it's good. To, I feel like it's good to know their strengths and weaknesses, but bottom line, when it comes down to it, you can't control them. You got to be the best right. you are on that night. So, I like that. I like that. It's a super random question, but what is what is your your like? If you have a cheat day in your your, <laughs> what are you gonna eat? Because I know you you stay like on a very strict diet for the most part. Yeah, so it's, your it's, meal it's so hard because fight before night. the fight, you're cutting weight and you're like, I'm going to eat all this stuff, like this long list of things. And then I never even get to the list. I just eat random things. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, I just put <laughs> like the first thing you see. <laughs> but I definitely get some sweets in, uh, ice cream, donuts after. And I definitely it's a sweet tooth. That's for sure after the fight, what I'll, what I'll do. Yeah. Sure. No, sure. I like how you mentioned the overcoming the losses too. You know, I, I, that's something that like I can't stand about boxing because it, just, it almost seems like if you take a loss, you're you're not that person anymore in the sport, and it almost kind of forces people to like retire early in some states. Like I, I love that in MMA, like you can take a loss and you can right. come back from it, and people don't question that. I don't know why they're both combat sports. I don't know why it is the way it is between like with the fan base, but I mean, I think it's pretty. You, so you were you were like what four? What was your uh, your loss? So three? I was Which four and four in Bellator, and I had lost three in a row. Uh, so like I, I guess mm -hmm. I won. 
not really sure. Uh, and so anyways, I had lost three in a row and it was kind of like, right. But I was fighting at a weight that was not my real weight class. You know, I was fighting at 125, and that's just not my weight. Uh, pretty much walk around at that when I'm in camp. So, um, you know, we decided since Bellator didn't yeah. have 115, um, we just couldn't do it anymore. Uh, we asked to be released, and they released us, and that's when I fought out and then signed with Invicta and have been, you know, doing doing really good and feeling really good since moving back down to my actual weight class. Um, I had I had fought at, at 115 before Bellator, right. but I'm just, like, so opportunity-based. So when we got that you know, opportunity to fight for them, I just could not say no. And I love the experience that I got there. A lot of that, you know, yeah. shaped, <laughs> shaped how I feel about MMA and how I, like, look at it. So I regret nothing, you know. It was it was difficult fighting at that weight, but moving back down, I felt fantastic, and th- that's where I'll stay for the rest of my career. Mm-hmm. So it's all learning progress, you know. Um, so I know this is kind of hit or miss too. I know you used to love watching the fights. Do you is now because you're training all oh, the yeah. time? Do you still watch MMA when you can? Yeah, I like to watch. Or is it not? Yeah. So what are your um, on the main card this weekend? I'm really really excited for the Komen and. The main, I would need, yes, yes. That's Kai Clark. I would need to look at the Marino, full right? card. Oh, yeah. I know it's a good card, but I, I don't guys. know all the fights right now. But, yeah, definitely the co-main, very excited. And then the main, I'm just more curious. And then the ring match. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I love that matchup with Kai Clark, France, and Moreno. Because, like, I, I don't know how you can't like Moreno. The guy's, like, I, I saw like, a thing that said, uh, I think Dana White said that he has – the biggest turnout of like like all the meet and greets and stuff. Like he has such a huge turnout. I'm like, I think he his is, personality. and he's, he's good. Just, like, and he backs it up, and, you know, he's got like the whole country behind, like his whole country behind right. him. And you always love to see that. It just like he's just a good yeah. the whole package. Absolutely. Yeah, he's just a very genuine guy. I mean, he he just like I don't know. I I love, I love watching the fight. I love yeah, I love his interviews. I'm just like, this dude, this dude's great. Um, do you have a pick for the main card on the or the main event? The I'm rematch? curious about that one exactly yes, because it's kind of a toss up in my mind. I just feel like it's whoever more comes mentally prepared. Uh, yeah, exactly. I think I'm more torn up just because of their last fight. I mean, I think that. I mean, I'm sure there's people who expected Pena to win, but that, I guess not necessarily in that way. Right. So I think that was a very shocking fight to everyone. Not Vegas. So. The, I'm, yeah, this rematch is de- it's definitely exciting. I think it's going to show a lot about. I'm curious. Where both I, women are I at hope to see Amanda make the adjustments necessary. Uh, but I am curious if, if you know, Juliana can do it again. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. And even if, even if Newt right. Amanda does lose, I would like to see a good fight. You know, I'd like to see her make the adjustments. Kind of like after Rose. Beat um, Waylee. I was right. like, you know, when they came back, it was a lot better. Right. Obviously, she didn't have to kick to her head, but uh, I mean, it was it was good to see a competitive fight because sometimes people right. lose, and it's like it, it happens. It, it just does. It. I mean, I, you see it almost every card where someone may have more skill than someone, but you make one mistake, and it's just like, yeah, I'm curious. I don't really lean so. either way. No, I know you said. You're- yeah. So you said you're not in, obviously you're not in any rush to, you just got into the UFC, you just entered, you're not in any rush to call out any ranked fighters or anything, but are there a few fighters you've had your eye on that you either think would be a fun fight or right. just someone like you want to fight, like whether it's a matchup or just someone you've no, seen yourself um, fighting there's before? There's just so many options. I don't like to like focus on something until it's like you know, yeah. confirmed, but I am excited and curious as to, you know, what's going to be offered next, but, uh, nothing specific. Ideally, would you yes, like to get I another fight would. in before the uh, end of the year? October, November. I would love to yeah. get one more in. Okay. And on average, you like how many fights, how many times do you like to fight a year? Three, four? Kind of just whatever works. You it said just you're depends an uh, what gets offered. Like I do want to stay busy. So, like, three at least, I want to say, for next year. You know, this year, the year had already passed. But uh, definitely probably two, yeah. three, 
next year. And I know some people, like, the second they stop fighting, they, I mean, everyone's different. You got guys like Patty who she like to grub out, and then there's other people who are back in the gym four days after their fight. And, and what kind of type of, do you like to take a break after your fight, after that long camp, or are you pretty quick I to get back like in the gym? I do like to take, like, training? a week or two and then get back into it. Right. Yeah. Yes. Just stay busy, keep you occupied. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it's nice to yes. you know, not be on that strict schedule. But I'm, I'm the same way you are. If I don't have yeah. a strict schedule, I'll almost not do anything. <laughs> so I need, I need like the structure. It just, it, I feel like it benefits like every aspect of my life. Otherwise, like yeah, I do I'm like, like just, you know, kind of the lifestyle. <laughs> um, no rush, but, but I do need to head out in like a minute or two. If that's okay, <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I actually have one more question because, especially with like the like you talked about the female side of MMA being a lot newer relative to the men's and everything. I guess what do you have advice or influential for the young female fighters coming up that have any interest? In I always like to say you know find like a gym and a team that you know suits you. Don't just go somewhere because everyone's saying you know you've got to be at this or that gym. Um, that's pretty important to me just because, you know, you see it all the time, people talking about, oh, you've got to be at this or that gym to be successful. And the truth is that you don't. You just need to be doing the right things with the right people. So that's big on my list. Um, and also to test yourself. Um, you know, don't just pad a record. Uh, test yourself before you get there so you're not shocked when you get there. Right. I have a feeling <laughs> we'll that's about to happen to Sean O'Malley. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that matchup, but and I love I love Sean O'Malley, but I'm just like curious is the word that describes yeah. it best. I'm like, dude, that is a jump. We'll see. That is one of the baddest men on the planet, and I know Sean O'Malley is a great striker, but we'll see. I'm that's, curious. That's, that's, that. I don't have anything to say about it. I'm just like, yes, absolutely. But that was great talking to you. Uh, I'll, we'll we'll keep in touch. We're we're working on dropping some merch and stuff that we it's it's been a long process. Awesome. We'll I'll get in touch with you and we'll send you some stuff. Um, and I Thank look forward you so to much. Thanks for having me. You know, as you grow, so should be fun. You too. Yeah, thank so, you very much for coming on. Yeah, good weekend.